See, I have enlisted around 13 properties here and we are going to go to each one of them. If you look at the properties, they may be very similar to what you have uh, learned in synapses like one-way chemical synapses, you know, one-way conduction, facilitation, occlusion, you know, fatigue. So these all are quite similar to your synapses. But to enumerate, here I have listed around 13 properties of reflexes. What are those? Adequate stimulus, delay, that is reflex delay, or you can say, you know, in case of synapses, we were calling it as a synaptic delay. Then one-way conduction, Summation, in summation, we have all already know about the temporal summation and the spatial summation. Then irradiation, final common pathway, facilitation, inhibition, after discharge, fatigue or habituation, rebound phenomena, occlusion and sensitization. Okay, so now we are going to spend our time on each of these Property. So let us go to the first property that is the adequate stimulus. What does this adequate stimulus tell me? It is telling that the precise stimulus which involves a reflex response is called the adequate stimulus for that particular reflex. Okay. So if I think of muscle spindle, for the muscle spindle, touch is not an adequate stimulus. Pressure is not an adequate stimulus. What is an adequate stimulus for the muscle spindle? It is stretching of the muscle. So for any reflex, there has to be an adequate stimulus for the reflex to happen, for the whole the reflex arc to be active. Then comes the delay. What is the delay? Delay, as I have told you, you know, the reflex delay. So let us go to the first property that is the adequate stimulus. What does this adequate stimulus tell me? It is telling that the precise stimulus which involves a reflex response is called the adequate stimulus for that particular reflex. Okay. So if I think of muscle spindle, for the muscle spindle, touch is not an adequate stimulus. Pressure is not an adequate stimulus. What is an adequate stimulus for the muscle spindle? It is stretching of the muscle. So for any reflex, there has to be an adequate stimulus for the reflex to happen, for the whole the reflex arc to be active. Then comes the delay. What is the delay? Delay, as I have told you, you know, the reflex delay, it is called as reflex latency. What is this reflex latency? It is the time, it is the elapsed time between a stimulus and a response. Okay, and this is uh, this delay, as I told you, you know, it is going to be dependent on two factors. One is the conduction velocity of the nerve fibers, which is being there. Okay, it is going to be dependent on to the number of synapses that is involved in your reflex. So there is going to be a delay, a small time of interval, you know, from the point of stimulus till the response. You may not get immediately. There are some milliseconds of delay in that. And that delay is because maybe there are many events, you know, the impulses have to travel through it. So there has to be conduction of the impulses. Plus it has to go to the synapses. So there are many mechanisms, many events which are occurring at the synapses. They also will take some time. Then the impulse has to come to the effector and the effector also is going to take some time to respond. So whole of this delay is called as reflex latency or the delay. Then comes the another property which is called as one-way conduction. What is this one-way conduction? During a reflex activity, the impulses are transmitted in one direction through the reflex arc as per your Bell-Majendi law. So Bell-Majendi law, was it it say that the dorsal side, we are going to have the sensory fibers who are going to terminate onto my, the motor neurons and so the motor neurons are going to go, isn't it? So, Bell-Majendi law, if I have to draw here a spinal cord, so what does it say? That I'll have my sensory fibers who are coming through this and then I'll have my efferent fibers going to my effector organs if this is my receptors, right? So, this is my reflex arc. 
Now, this reflex arc is not being a one way, it's not a two way conduction. It is one way conduction as because the afferent impulses are going to come through the afferent nerve. They are going to go to the center, then they will go to the effector organ, right? So, that's what is called as the one way conduction. So, it is going to go in this direction. So, this is one way conduction. So, impulses are going to follow this pathway of reflex arc in one way. So, that's why this is a property of your reflex called as one way conduction. Now, let us come to summation. Summation, we know that there is temporal and special summation who are going to play a role in facilitation of responses during reflex activity. Okay. So, let me tell you how it is going to happen. Suppose this is my afferent fiber. Okay, good enough. These afferent fiber is going to terminate onto the many of the interneurons as you had seen, right? Polysynaptic, this is my polysynaptic reflex. So, these all are going to ultimately converge onto my motor neuron, the final common pathway whom we call the alpha motor neurons, you know, or the motor neurons or the efferent verbs going to the glands. So, ultimately, all of them are going to come and converge here. Now, these responses, they can be summated, you know, the impulse from here, it is, you know, we have the neurotransmitters coming from these interneuron, this interneuron, they may cause a local response here in this nerve. So, because of one, two, three, okay. So, I can have two types of summation. What is that summation? Two types of it. It is called special summation and other is called temporal summation. You remember that story which I told in the class that once, you know, you are a kid. Okay, let me draw and then show you if you remember it. Okay, so we have the teacher here. Fine. And she is yes. holding a parents teachers meeting. All right. And you okay. as a kid, you go along with you. Your father also goes. Then your mother also goes and somebody else also go, right? Yes, sir. You are the postsynaptic terminal. Now, in this parents teachers meeting, the teacher is also giving something. You know, she starts her thing that he is like this, he is like this. Suppose if you, you know, I, I, I know you are a good student, but let me take that you are not that good student. You are a very naughty student. So, as you go in front of this teacher, she will start shouting and telling, oh, this is like this in the class. The moment she starts shouting, your father also shouts, your mother also shouts, and whoever else is also shouting at the same time. But many people in your space are shouting at the same time. Got my point? This type of response that you're going to give is actually, you know, these all responses are going to get summated and this type of summation is called as spatial summation where many synaptic neurons, they fire at the same time and their responses, they get summated and so that summated response that you get is called as spatial summation. So, remember this scenario. Well, how about the temporal summation? You are a small kid, nicely happy, you know, very happy. Then you have your mother here. Okay, let me draw your mother here. Now this mother, she is not going to leave you at home. Not going to make you live at home. So what will happen? Now you are doing something naughty thing and what she does? She keeps firing at one time. She is the only person, but she keeps firing at you. You no longer are happy now. Rather, you became sad and you start crying. So, this is an example of temporal summation. Got my point? What temporal summation is? Temporal yes, summation is when a single presynaptic neuron fires continuously at the postsynaptic neuron. The responses are like for one fire here, another here, second here, third. So, they get summated. We can 
we call this type of response summation as temporal summation. Is it clear now? Yes, ma'am. So how is that you missed it out? Okay. So this is the example of special summation. And this could be the example of temporal summation. When I talk of summation here in the reflexes, I'm actually talking about many of these interneurons coming and converging onto the common pathway, the final motor neuron. Okay. So now these final one, these, you know, the pre ones, they, these responses can be summated to my final one. And this type of summation I can have either in a temporal summation or I can have the special summation. Okay. Now fifth property is called as, is it clear to you now summation? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Always remember that example where multiple pre-synaptic neurons are going to give their impulses to one poor post-synaptic neuron. Okay. So that response is called as special summation. One person firing like anything to another postsynaptic cell that is called as temporal summation. Temporal. Okay. Now let us go to irradiation. What does this irradiation mean? In case of reflexes, when we have a strong stimulus, the impulses they spread to many neighboring neurons in the center and they produce wider responses which is due to the transmission of impulses through a large number of collaterals of afferents and their interneurons. So what does exactly means? Let me draw it for you and show it. Okay. So what does it say that when you give a strong sensory stimulus, the impulses. So if I give a strong sensory impulse through my afferent nerves, see when we have a strong sensory stimulus, Impulses spread to many neighboring neurons in the center and they provide or produce a wider response. This wider, which is the transmission of impulses through large number of collaterals of... Nay, this is not wrong. This is right. I'm going to tell you. Oh, you totally got me confused here. Okay. Let me tell you what irradiation is. Okay. Irradiation in one... Uh, Simple. What is the meaning of irradiation? If I have to ask you, what is the literal meaning of irradiation? Irradiation means uh, uh, radiation on something. Uh, irradiation is means is when, you know, uh, the source, there is a source of object which is radiating, isn't it? And yes. this is going to affect nearby areas. The exposure yes, is going to now affect your nearby areas, isn't it? This is what the literal meaning of irradiation means, right? So irradiation in case of synapses, uh, not the synapses, in case of reflexes, what is that? This is what I wanted to tell you, that irradiation, suppose this is my strong, there is a strong sensory input, okay? So there is a strong sensory input here. What will happen? There will be a lot of action potentials being generated. Now this is going to come. It, it will not only, it, it, it gives collaterals, right? It may give some collaterals. There may be other neurons. Okay, there may be other neurons here. Now, this is the final common pathway for this reflex. So this strong, when there is a strong stimulus, these afferent impulses, when they come, some of them, they get diverted via the collaterals. So you're not only going to stimulate your central uh, common efferent fiber, rather these collaterals of the afferents and their interneurons may irradiate or stimulate the neighboring neurons. So this property of the reflex is called as irradiation property. Okay. Now I have been all the time telling about final common pathway, final common pathway. So in case of spinal reflexes, see, we not only have to think of the spinal reflexes for irradiation, we have to even think of cortical reflexes also. Okay. We have to think of cerebellar reflexes also. So 
for uh, spinal reflexes, what is my final common pathway? Uh, my alpha motor neuron is my common final common pathway. Okay. So alpha motor neuron in many, uh, you can say, uh, common terminologies, it's sometimes called as the final common pathway in a reflex as all the excitatory, whether you have an excitatory impulse coming in to the, it or you have an inhibitory interneuron, which is kind of, you know, giving a synapse to this. So almost all either excitatory or inhibitory, ultimately they funnel on it. So hence, your alpha motor neuron is also termed as your final common pathway. 